Thank you very much. Uh, you know, it is good to be at your service because I have my all mentors and teachers are all here. So they evaluate me and then later on they give me C plus What I'm trying to do perhaps as a summary statement is to show that although the title is Vindication of the Rights of Women, perhaps if we refocus and we shift our thinking from woman or man to human, we would achieve the equality and vindication in a more realistic, balanced manner. That is to say that uh, I have seen throughout these my experiences and studies that the problem of humanity cannot be resolved by defensive, reactive response to any suffering or abuse. Rather, as Dr. Bacon uh, very convincingly showed us, when we accept responsibility and when we respond in a way that creates environment which benefits both sexes, then we actually help our own selves as well. This is why now I want to uh, also use uh, Dr. Kerrigan's definition of feminine versus feminism. Uh, my whole concept here is using my orientation, uh, which is Jungian, uh, is that we may not be a promoter of feminism as a reaction, but we all have this masculine, feminine quality within us. And I would like to uh, perhaps uh, look at Jung when he used he said that ordinarily the people identify man as a person who has logic, who has a power of abstraction, and the woman is the one who deals with emotion. Traditionally, that was what uh, the norm was. The contribution of Jung, perhaps, was, which is in line with all of the religious uh, principles of I know of, that you have to distinguish between anatomy and reality of the person. And I think this is what uh, is the take home message for me is. Anatomy is born through the requirement of the biological orientation. Reality is what Dr. Purdy referred to as a spiritual aspect. A spiritual here would be simply mean the reality which is not confined by the contingency of time, space, and condition. Therefore, uh, Jung perhaps saw it, in my humble opinion, very clearly that if I am a man, if I understand that I unconsciously also have those qualities that we define as a feminine, I get closer to that undiscovered self. In other words, if I am a man, 
over and the woman. I also know that while I am a man which has some traditional definitions, I also have a counter reality which is unconscious, unseen, which is defined as a peacemaker, for instance, to be able to relate to others. Do you remember one of our speakers said, feminine woman means peacemaker, woman means to have a relationship with others, uh, and uh, man means to be separated. Jung says that is customarily the way it seems like it, but it is not actually in reality that way. If anybody who is alive, whether male or female, they yearn for that balance between feminist aspect and masculine aspect. So as you can see, what we are trying to do, that for instance that the word oral is feminine, it was defined as interpersonal relatedness. You can be a wife or a husband, and then you do that. You can uh, be a mother or a father to do that. If you look at feminine as not biological relation, rather than look at it as a quality that a human being has, or, for instance, rather than identifying masculine with a uh, biological man, which derives logic, ability to think abstract, you say, I am biologically woman, but I also have a counterpart, which has logic. Therefore, what I'm trying to get at is that you actually have to look at the two opposite signs but complementary aspects. That is to say, that every you do not marry another person only because of biological differences. There is some transformative reality which we need to be concerned. And this, according to Jung, who was true about every human being. This is why he identified as an archetype. Archetype is a universal reality that governs every created being. And if you are a follower of a religion such as Islam, Christianity, Baha'i faith, you can see that even these religions teaches that this quality of feminine masculine is a part of the existence of every created being. That is to say then, they go beyond being a man or a woman. They say every created being has the power of cohesiveness and the power of separation. By uh, young for instance, look at these two concepts as a vital for any meaningful relationship. This is why we uh, look at the people who actually were considering the human abuse, the people who actually were fed up with woman suffrage, they chose not to react. They actually try to respond in a way that it has universal implication. One of them is Elizabeth Stanton. Uh, you know her, but these are her major contributions. Uh, if you look at any of these works uh, that I'm familiar with, her full orientation was that reality of a person is not defined by sex or gender. 
because a gender is a role which is superimposed and autonomy is something which is biological. This is why if you look at the last work, that is one of the most important works ever written. He did not, she did not want to say that there is a Bible which is for man and there is a Bible for woman. She actually wanted to say that if you look at this Bible and you believe that it is from God, who is the creator of male and female, therefore whatever it says, it should be good for both independent of their biological orientation. This is why, for instance, uh, he, she did not look at woman to be inferior. And this is why uh, a Stanton uh, stands off as a person to educate people. Uh, and you look at all of these things uh, in a different light. Uh, I am going through, based on the years, uh, another one that uh, I think uh, you saw the description is uh, Tahereh. I uh, know that uh, most of us might not be even familiar with this figure, but the reason that I may uh, chose her was because she also did not react. She responded. She came from an environment that from every perspective considered woman in birth. We have her writings. I, uh, this is why I introduced her first as a influential theology of the religious text. She has so many writings that she wrote in Arabic. I have brought a book that lists most of her works, that she, her assumption was this, all people of religion, rather than considering male or female, consider the reality of a person. Reality of person does not operate based on the conventional role that you give it. Rather, it is defined by the reality and the potential. She believed in empowerment. She believed what we call today for recovery. She believed that we need to move ahead. This is why in her writings, she did not believe that you have to react. She would encourage women, rather than to concentrate on women's right, concentrate on human right, because if you concentrate on human right, woman's right will take its own place. Uh, she uh, was called Borgat of Any, source of my eyes, Sayyid Kazan, you may not be even familiar, or you do not need to be even worried about it, but it is important to realize that some of the leading religious leaders who were fair-minded, also recognize the reality that this woman was promoting. It is very, this is why we are not a stereotype in all the leaders, religious leaders or otherwise. And she also was an outspoken critic of unjustified conventional norms and religious orthodoxies. This is very important. Because she did not want to be anti-Islam, she did not want to be anti-Christianity. No, this should not be viewed as such. Rather, she wanted to say, those people who use religious texts in order to justify in any way, shape, or form to uphold woman's superiority, you said this is wrong. Why? She was so intelligent to say that if God created man and woman, and we are all the servant of the same creator, all of these things should be conventional that you have created. 
And it says true education is very important. True education alone, she states, you can change everything. She's also known as removing the veil. But when you read her writings, she was more intelligent, more insightful to think that if you change your garment, you can reach quality. She says the problem of humankind is that either wants to change the inner with no relation to utter, or wants to change the utter with no relationship to inner. So she actually says first you need to remove the veins from your inner psyche. This is very important. We are talking before you. We are talking before Adam. We are talking before the and it is important to say that the woman has stated that, and she was, it is very interesting whether uh, we uh, know about the Bobbism or why they, that is the side the issue, is not the theme of this conference, but what it is important is that she chose on her own to investigate the reality. That is important. Whether the result of your search is right or wrong, that is not the issue here. But she took an initiative to actually remove the veil. What do you mean by remove the veil? She cast off the veil in the presence of men in 1845. What do you mean? They taught the reality of a true Muslim, Christian, or whatever woman is to be wrapped by a veil. She one day came to the meeting of all these large gatherings. She came very calm, nicely dressed without veil. They asked her, what is this? What is this nonsense? You are breaking all the traditions. And then her response is one of her letters. He says, your problem is that you live by tradition, not by values. He says, I have accepted a new faith, meaning Bobbism, because it says the life without values reduce you to an animal that follows conventional na nature of the animal human. So the way that she removed, she believed that no manifestation, no prophet, no religion should wait any woman. Authority. She said chastity is not only authority, it is both ino. An author. This is what I want you to remember this woman. Also in 1848 is very important because if you go back in 1848, there was a Santa Falls uh, conference. Do you remember? Yeah. You were not there. Uh, <laughs> you uh, uh, this is a uh, and look at July 1910, that is very important. But now go back, and that actually 1848, she was one of the central figures of a convention which actually was held around the same time, mid end of June, beginning of July of 1848, at the same time that Santa Falls was underway, the purpose of the convention was the advent of new spiritual civilization and the independent from the traditions of the past. Now go back, when you go home, go and look at the report of July 1928 convention. And you can see a Stanton actually said that we have come to promote the reality of woman to have the same golden rights, 
the same spiritual life, human life, as men. Now, look at this. These two, although they come from two different parts of the world, but again, young, synchronicity. Synchronicity. And if you believe in any other religious system, uh, it is very important saying of uh, Prophet Muhammad that says, if you make somebody sad in the east, somebody in the west gets sad. In Quran it says, if you kill one person, you kill the whole world. The people say, this guy is crazy, what is this? Now we know what he's trying to say is, everything has a holistic effect. Somebody under the context of religion promotes independence and a spiritual renewal in the East. At the same time, somebody in the West promotes a spiritual renewal, human rights, independent of the past. Think how we are so interrelated than we think. Last but not the least. That is. You know her? She is a very powerful woman. One of the founding feminist philosophers. She advocates women's rights, and she is the first woman that I know that systematically writes about reality of women's rights. Uh, as you can see, she appeared in the 18th century. And you can see all of these new ideas about women's liberation comes after the 19th century. She, look at the first book. That is a, as you know, that book, Thoughts on the Education of Daughters. For the last 50 years, that book has made a the first 500 Googles, guess important, most important book ever has been written. She actually uh, trying to do what Becca Curry was saying. She was telling the, the mothers, do you want the team change? Rather than to accept where you are, rather than oppose your husband, try to change the way the things are. How is this to be education? Education of who? Education of your offspring. This is why she believed that through a comprehensive, unbiased educational system, you actually can bring the reality of equality of man and woman. Uh, look at her next book, Vindication of the Rights of Men. You see, we all talked about Vindication of the Rights of Women. She believed, and that was a, uh, you know, it was a French Revolution during this time. She's considered, by the way, one of the highest proof of the French Revolution. When it came to the systematic change of human relationship. She, in the vindication of rights of man and woman, she actually tries to prove that unless your aim be concentration on the rights and the privilege and the responsibility of both sexes, any force that you take towards the equality will fail because it is gender-based. This is why that concept of two beings of the one there and the Bahabas, that simply means that don't look at the other side as opposite, rather complementary. She gives that in the vindication of rights of man. He says rather than man or woman, consider them two opposite sides from physical standpoint of view 
too complementary to say from a specialist point of view. This is but basically basically Jung is saying. This is why uh, I think maybe Jung has been uh, familiar with this or not. I haven't found in her this collection. But the last but not the least, she talks about wrongs of woman. She says, you know, I do not mean to say dwell on your negative aspect. But rather than blame, for I to accept responsibility. He says the more we women accept responsibility that we are not an inferior human being, nor we are a superior human being, we have right, privileges, we can be scientists, we can be a service person. He says the moment that we accept that is the beginning of enlightenment. Short and sweet, the vindication of rights of woman only becomes meaningful in my humble view when we concentrate on the reality of human. And we have to recognize human is not what it is, it is what is becoming. This is why we call this foundation human in the making, because it is a process, it's not a Thank you.